Hey, what's up? I'm Susan. Welcome back to Marketing English. This is episode four. Before we get into today's content, I'd like to remind you that please remember to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. 也欢迎大家对于喜欢的或者有争议的内容进行点赞、评论、收藏和转发。在这里有必要提一句，就是 Susan 频道里面所有内容的策划。拍摄、剪辑以及上传、发布都是 Susan 自己一个人来完成的，背后没有大的公司和集团以及 MCN 机构的流量扶持，所以在这里 Susan 非常希望能够得到大家的支持，持续关注这一系列视频的更新，也欢迎大家把 Susan 的频道推荐给身边的朋友。Without further ado, let's dive into today's marketing ideas. 那前几天，国内视频网站哔哩哔哩的一支营销视频《后浪》可以算是刷爆了网络。那今天我们就来聊聊《后浪》。看看我们跟这支品牌营销视频可以学到什么。那 Susan 对于视频的内容不做评论啊，相信每一个视频的观看者都会有自己的感受，无论是共鸣也好，还是不敢苟同也好，这支视频完成了他的使命，就是品牌的首次正式露出和定位。There are a few things related to this video I'd like to share today. The first thing I'd like to mention is that the video itself is called a viral video. A viral Video, which means it went online and became a quick passing around. So next time when you want to express a video which is hot and well known online, you can call it a viral video. A viral video. This video becomes a success not only because of the right time, right content, right tone, but also Billy Billy has been an established brand. For a really long time, that means a large number of followers well recognized and accepted it. What the brand did with this video is only to officially announce its persona in the market. 第二点，我想跟大家分享的就是“后浪”这个名字啊，它如果翻译成英文应该是怎么样子的？“后浪”，如果你直接翻译的话，后面的浪，后面 behind following 啊、uh, ，long waves。所以，如果你直接翻译成啊、um, ，falling waves 或者是 waves behind， 你从这个层面上去理解的话，肯定是跟呃视频的原意是有出入的。那看完这支视频之后 ，Susan 当然跟大家一样理解到后浪就是指年轻人、新生代，所以是不是把后浪翻译成 the young generation， 或者是 younger generation， 或者是 youngsters 会更合适一些呢？ The reason why I mentioned wordings just now is because if you look at the videos, it is obvious a solo show, in which the speaker himself elaborate on every single word through his tones, his body languages, his facial expressions, and his sincerity. The whole video relies strongly on his copyright and the way how the speaker acts out. The tone of the stage is light and black to show that the brand and the speaker are serious. It is not a joke, but a well prepared and respected platform for you and all the young generations. 原来 Susan 在传媒大学学习视频制作课程的过程当中，我们当时接受到的一个理念就是，所有影像的内容啊，首先要用画面来讲故事。当画面里面的内容和信息不足以涵盖或者是表达创作者的胸臆时，这时文案才会出来雪中送炭。简单来讲，就是画面先行。但是进入到职场打拼之后，参与到很多实际的商业案例的视频制作和跟很多的广告人打交道之后，你会发现，文案啊。在市场营销当中的作用往往是深入骨髓的。很多时候，好的广告创意首先是文案先出来的，然后才会根据文案去创作画面。这跟我们学校当中学的理论其实有一些相悖。I don't want to judge which one is better, but there is a rule that all your methods shall serve your goal. If you think copywriting shall stand out to better convey your message, then go with your instinct. If you want to be a little bit arty and euphemistic in your marketing language, then take good use of photography and play with it well. While that is only one aspect of video storytelling, movies and documentaries still very much emphasize its photography beauty and depth. Some of the phenomenal and impressive moments in movies and documentaries. Are even silent. 扯得有点远了。其实第三点 ，Susan 想要说的就是，在这个市场营销视频、广告和短视频里面的文案的作用啊，往往大于其他的一些以画面作为讲故事主要手段的营销作品。当然，这跟作品的属性有很大关系。我们知道，营销类的所有的出街作品都是为了树立品牌形象，最终所有的艺术形式都要服务于品牌的商业属性。那 Susan 做过一期如何做好视频体验的全英文的节目，感兴趣的朋友可以在视频列表当中查找和观看。
anyone who really wants to pursue your career in the marketing and advertising business shall practice your writing skills. You don't have to be the top ones as maybe your company will have professional copywriters, but I get a sense that copywriting really matters in the advertising business and how it matters really shapes your way of thinking differently. Susan 也做过一期有关于广告公司的节目啊，感兴趣的朋友可以在视频列表当中查找并观看。So to recap the ideas I shared with you today, number one, what is a viral video? Number two, how to translate whole line in English? Number three, why copywriting matters in the marketing and advertising business? Hopefully, today's content will be helpful to you. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.